So, welcome again to another one of my uh, uh, videos. This time I want to go back to look at the Loxley uh, metal box, um, which I did a review of uh, a little while ago. And you can now see it's got uh, it's loaded up with paint. The original Loxley box came empty. And I want to go through uh, my palette and just show you how to set up um, a palette from scratch really so completely from new uh, now this if I turn the palette around you can see how uh, my little color chart where I've put in some of the colors onto this uh, watercolor paper echoes and mirrors the colors that I have in in the palette itself the only difficulty here is I've kind of done it upside down and I'll, and I'll show you why so I don't need to make this error so when you first put together your palette and start squeezing out colors it's always good to have your little chart so you can understand where they are especially when you're starting out um, but of course I've put this upside down and back the front uh, because I'm not going to be holding the palette this way so on the bottom of this uh, palette we have a ring which helps when we hold it and this is specifically for really for outside painting and I want it to be around that way that's how I'm comfortable uh, painting is this way around so of course if I'm looking down at my palette and my colors this way and I put down the chart that I did it's all back to front and upside down so that was daft so I want to show you um, how I quickly constructed uh, my little chart to know which colors are on my palette. I'd have a little experiment there, which I don't really want, and I want to be able to take this out with me until I get really used to them. So, I've started out by just uh, taking a piece of watercolor paper that will fit roughly over the top. You can see that, and then I need to make sure that the colors. Uh, match up so let's just move this back a little bit and I'll show you so this is eight half pans along the top and along the bottom and in the middle we've got five full pans now for me the easiest way was to um, just measure halfway and that was 7.5 and then I'm gonna draw across on the 7.5 only in these two because I don't want the middle and then I'll roughly half those again and I don't really need to measure too much because I can just uh, see where they are by holding the ruler up there, there we go. And a similar again, so just put those two lines in. So that's given me four on each side and if I go roughly in the middle there again, we're gonna get eight when we've finished doing all of these. It depends how precise you want to be. I'm not too worried whether it's exactly as it is. Now, the interesting thing for the palette that I've created here with my new colors is some of the wells, the pans, um, have got more than one color in. Now, that's a bit odd in this, uh, just the way I like it, really. Why? Because some of the colors that I've used here um, I use a lot of so for example I've got yellow okra and here I've got raw sienna similar but they've got different qualities both of those um, and I've got two half pans filled with the raw sienna um, similar here I've got some neutral tint here and neutral tint here so it kind of goes round like that when I'm painting, I just find that the position of certain paints is useful for me. Same here. I've got some uh, ultramarine, and I've got ultramarine here. I use a lot of that colour, so rather than keep refilling, I've made sure I've got them close together. Um, obviously, everyone needs to develop their own palette for their own style of painting and, and the kinds of subjects that they're interested in. So that's the way I've, I've put this together. And the colors 
uh, going into that. You can have a quick look at, at that. Um, let's just bring in some water. There we go. Put that on this side and just see it. I like these. I I'd use these inside and outside. Take these outside, these collapsible lanterns. They're, they're great. Um, and just quickly show you how I'm going to put this together. Let's move this over a little bit. I'll move this back. And I don't want to be doing any mixing here because I'm just interested in filling up these to mirror what I have. But I need to get some water in. So I'll get some water in here. There we go. That should be enough. And then obviously going to be a lot of washing out. Um, so there we go with this neutral tint. Just pop that in there. And I've got some other neutral tint in here, which I believe is a little bit stronger. So I'm just going to do this by eye. You could. Um, just draw that out if you wanted. I'll just pop that in there by eye for quickness. Get rid of that. Move on to my Prussian blue. It's in here. So the first one was a neutral tint. This is Prussian blue. Just pop that in there. That's the only one. I don't use that too often. It's a nice green. And then we're going to come in here for some ultramarine. Nice and liquidy there, look. and we'll go into this one's ultramarine as well. And that comes out a little bit more to about there. And I'll pop that in. Ooh, lovely. So a touch of ultramarine. And then once I've done these and they're dry, I can write over the top of what the colours uh, actually are. Let's just move that back a little bit there. Um, I've got some cobalt blue here, and you get the idea. Um, nice strong blue, great for skies, it's got some cerulean, also great for skies, a bit lighter, summer's day type sky. Um, let's go in here for this yellow okra, it's going to come in here, and it really just gives me an idea of, of whoops, what's where, when, how and what, and that's something I didn't really want to happen. Let's have a quick look for the tissue. I've got all this on that. Which I chucked down here in the bin. Which isn't going to work, is it? So, never mind. I'll have to, to wash that one out. The best laid plans of mice and men, as they say. So we'll just continue. We'll pop this one in here. And you get the idea. That's a number, and this is a two different types of umbers there. Another one here. But by having having these down, it gives me an idea of the tones that I have. I've got already set up. There you go. You can see instantly what's inside the palette. That's an olive green. This one's a raw umber. Quite a strong colour. This one's very pale. This is a Naples yellow. It's very pale, this colour. So there you go. And then we've got our two um, raw siennas. Put those in. It's a cad red. Pop that in. It's quite a strong colour, this one. Obviously, the more water you pop in, the weaker and the more pigment we have in, the stronger. Getting blended and bleeding in there again, look. And this is cad yellow. Nice and bright colour, cad yellow. Well, lemon yellow, rather, that one. That's lemon. This is the cad. And obviously the lesson there was not to um, let these blend and bleed. Let's just take some of this out. I'll just do this again on this one. 
This is when you go, oh, I wish I had brought in a hairdryer so I could dry this really, really rapidly, really quickly. And also, why didn't I have a tissue to hand? Well, I wasn't expecting any mistake. But I do know, I've got one just here, so excuse the noise. And I'm bringing some of this. Take out that, or we'll just pop them back in again. The great thing about watercolours, as we can see there with the accident, is that they blend and bleed beautifully. And actually practising um, blending and bleeding colours is a great way to learn. So there we go, there's the yellow okra. Come back in for this glorious burnt umber. I'm trying to keep it away from there. And this one is just a number. This is, the, I've got a mixture here. This is, um, these are the white knight paints. Looking very similar there, aren't they? But actually this one tonally is slightly lighter and got different properties. So these are the white knights in here, the five. And then I have a mixture here of Windsor and Newton and Daniel Smith paints. I just like different ones for different reasons. I could recommend them, but you've got to find your own way really with all of this. Um, and you can only do it by trial and error. If you're a total beginner, um, just starting out and you're trying to figure out what colors to use, obviously you're gonna need your primaries. So red, yellow, and blue. Great primary, great mixing color here. Is the ultramarine, this one. Go for that. You can't go wrong. It granulates beautifully, as you can see. That means it goes into the tooth of the paper. Um, neutral tree tint, I'm a great fan of that because you, you touch a tiny part in and it will bring out other colors as well as great for shadows mixed with other colors. I mean, the yellow, I would always go for a raw sienna or an okra there, yellow okra, either or, if you're gonna just have a minimal palette. And then of course you need a red. Now obviously we've got cad red, but I would prefer maybe to go down into the sort of burnt umber type colors, the warmer sort of red you can see in here. Um, and this this one here actually is Alizar and Crimson, which would probably be a good one to use as your red as well. Um, yep, this one's burnt sienna or warmer, sort of brown coming in here. And this is Alizar in much brighter, and I use a lot of that, hence the two palettes that I have here. Now I'm just kind of messing around really with all this. And there it is. And that way I can then, um, when that's dry, have that inside, pop that up, keep that with my uh, palette and my painting equipment, right in which the colors are, but really it doesn't matter. The main thing is you practice with your colors. Now I've also uh, got another uh, short video up which talks about limited palettes and the sorts of things that you can uh, do with that. So I think that's enough time spent on this. I know some videos will run on and on and on and I don't want that to happen. Hopefully that was useful in how to set up your palette if you're beginning and a little color chart so you can quickly see, ah, uh, that's what they are. Especially as sometimes these palettes when you've been painting a lot, colors can blend and bleed in. Um, you've got your original so, uh, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and look out for my other content. And take care now. Bye-bye.